So now we talk about cancers of the urinary tract, specifically renal cancer, bladder cancer, and cancers in children. So first is renal cancer. This is a tumor arising from the renal tubules. And the risk factors for this are usually age, of course, and then hit smoking. So just common risk factors for cancer. And the other thing is this is associated with loss of the VHL gene on chromosome 3. You can remember that because VHL has three letters. This can be either a sporadic deletion or associated with the von hippel lindahl syndrome. So that's an inherited deletion in the VHL gene in the von hippel lindahl syndrome. Do you remember the tumors that are associated with this syndrome? Obviously, there's renal cancer. Then you can also have hemangioblastomas in the head. And you can have retinal angiomas, so just tumors in the eye. Okay, that's von hippel lindahl syndrome. Clinical features here. First of all, this is usually asymptomatic, and it's discovered incidentally on imaging. Uh, again, often in older patients with a past smoking history. If, you, if the patient has symptoms, there's a classic triad, and they have some combination of that usually. They have hematuria, flank pain, and a palpable mass. Hematuria, flank pain, palpable mass all should make sense to you. Um, the hematuria would be from the blood vessels in the kidney bursting, leaking, and then the blood will then go through the ureters into the, out, your, out into the pee. Now this cancer is associated with some perineal plastic syndromes. It can secrete EPO and renin, which I think makes sense just based on these are very kidney related to, uh, hormones. You can also get other more common perineal plastic hormones, so like ACTH and PTH related peptide. You also see these in what other cancer that we talked about. Remember we see this in lung cancers as well. So, I want to talk about metastasis now. One, this one spreads hematogenously. Remember that most solid cancers from the epithelial tissue usually spread lymphatically. There's a few exceptions. There's four exceptions that you should know about. Do you remember what those are? Do you know what those are? One is this one we just talked about. Liver cancer also spreads hematogenously. That's why you can get that Bud Chiari syndrome because it spreads into the into the what is it the hepatic vein and blocks that up. The other two that can cause that spread hematogenously, even though they're epithelial cancers, are follicular thyroid cancer and choriocarcinoma. Okay, the rest spread lymphatically. So things like pancreatic cancer, gallbladder cancer, blah blah blah, all spread lymphatically. Now I just want to add that the other ones that spread hematogenously are sarcomas. These are tumors that are from connective slash non epithelial tissues. Okay, so those spread, sarcomas spread hematogenously as well. Now this is associated with the left side of varicocele. Varicocele, as you remember, hopefully, or if you have learned this, is dilation of these spermatic veins. These spermatic veins usually drain through the gonadal veins, this is the gonadal vein, and they differ on the left side and the right side. Right side drains directly into the IVC. Left side drains into the left renal vein. Okay, and I just tell you that this, this tumor can spread hematogenously. So it's going to spread into the renal vein, and it's going to cause obstruction. It's going to decrease drainage of these gonadal and spermatic veins, and you get dilation, and it can be felt, and this is a varicocele. Okay. So less, it's more commonly on the right because based, it's all based on the anatomy. Okay, now we go into the tumors for kids. Wilms tumor, most common renal tumor in children. It's made of a immature renal tissue. Wilms tumor is associated with mutations in the WT1 and WT2 genes. We'll talk more about that in a second. The clinical features here are that you get a large unilateral flank mass and it does not cross the midline. And you may or may not have hematuria. But this is the key thing here. It does not cross the midline. I'm going to tell you why. You're going to contrast that with neuroblastoma. Wilms tumor does not cross the midline. Now there's a couple of syndromes that you see Wilms tumor with, and it's all because of these mutations. So there's a bunch of them. So most Wilms tumors are sporadic, but that you can see them associated with various syndromes. First one is Wagger syndrome. Wagger stands for Wilms tumor, aniridia, genital urinary problems, mental and motor retardation. Okay. Next is Denis Drash syndrome. See, Wilms tumor, male pseudohermaphroditism, and renal glomerular disease. Wagger is from WT1 deletion, Denise Drash from WT1 mutation. Finally, we have Beckwith-Weiderman syndrome, 
and this is a this is this you get Wilms tumor and enlargement widening so wider men widening of different parts of the body so you get large organs especially the tongue that's what you see here that's called macroglossia big tongue and you get muscular hemi hypertrophy i've drawn this out for you in my terrible drawing skills half of the body super buff or larger than the other half so i just blasted you with all these three syndromes but wagger is easier because you have this nice mnemonic already Wilms tumor and iridia genital urinary problems mental and motor retardation Back with Widerman, just remember that Widerman is widening of things. So large organs, large tongue, one half of the body is larger than the other. And then Denise Drash syndrome, you do have to memorize, but there's male super pseudo hermaphroditism and renal glomerular disease. So these are the syndromes that you could see Wilms tumor in. But oftentimes Wilms tumor is just by itself. Remember the key thing for Wilms tumor, it does not cross the midline. So it's a flank mass that does not cross the midline when you try to move it. In contrast to that, we have a neuroblastoma. This is the most common adrenal tumor in the adrenal medulla in children. So remember, adrenal gland sits right above the kidneys here. Adrenal gland right here, sits right above it. This tumor arises from neural crest cells, okay? And again, it most commonly occurs in the adrenal med medulla, but because it's from a neural crest cell, it can occur anywhere along the sympathetic chain. But again, most often in the adrenal medulla. And this is associated with the endmic oncogene overexpression. Neuroblastoma and mic oncogene overexpression. Clinical features here, I keep emphasizing because this one can cross the midline. It's going to be abdominal mass that can cross the midline. The neuroblastoma crosses the midline, Wilms tumor does not cross the midline. What you're going to see on labs, you're going to see increased urinary HVA and VMA. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the names. But these are basically breakdown metabolites of catecholamines that are made in the adrenal medulla. So if you have a tumor, you're making more of these catecholamines get more of these breakdown products, HVA, VMA. And then on histology, you're going to see Ro Homer Wright rosette. So it's just these rosettes. These are rosettes here. These cells proliferating around a vessel. You also see this in medulloblastoma, just for a throwback. So neuroblastoma, Wilms tumor, you have to make sure you, have to, you know how to differentiate these two. And it's based on which one can cross the midline. So bladder cancer. Bladder cancer, we can classify into two, two different types based on the originating cell type. It can be a transitional cell bladder cancer or a squamous cell bladder cancer. And this cancer most commonly presents with ha painless hematuria. Okay? Painless hematuria. Now, let's talk about transitional cell carcinoma. And trans transitional cells, we can also call urothelial. It's just a different name for it, more vocabulary for you to memorize. And this arises from the normal urothelial lining of the urinary tract. The urinary tract is normally lined with the urothelial cells. We, remember, we also call these transitional cells because they are able to change their shape. They can stretch out and they can be less stretched out. Risk factors for this cancer are PSAC. So these are finacetin, smoking, aniline dyes. Aniline dyes you see in uh, cloth and fabric workers because they use a lot of that. And then you have cyclophosphamide use. And these are all carcinogens. They induce mutations in this ur the ur urothelial cells that normally line the urine urinary tract and cause them to become cancer. Okay, just remember PSAC, finacetin and smoking, aniline dyes, cyclophosphamide. Next is squamous cell carcinoma. So again, normally the bladder is lined by urothelial cells. It does not have squamous cells. So how do you get squamous cells? You get squamous cells from squamous metaplasia from chronic bladder irritation. Okay, irritation, as you remember, causes metaplasia. Remember, you see that in Barrett's esophagus from GERD, irritation, you get metaplasia into the intestinal type of cells. So this is the same, th same idea in bladder cancer. So eventually, you're going to get dysplasia and development of cancer. So the chronic, uh, common irritants that cause this metaplasia are going to be chronic cystitis, so irritation from infection. Smoking causes irritation. And then you can have a cystosoma hematobium infection. Okay. You see this affection very commonly in Middle Eastern males or people from Egypt. So if you see a Middle Eastern male with bladder cancer, then you might have to answer on your, on your test that they might have a schistosoma hematobium infection or they probably have a squamous cell carcinoma of the bladder. All right, I'm going to skip ahead and skip this hyponatremia stuff. And I don't have the notes here. But I want to talk, you can completely stop this. I've talked everything you need to know. For step one, but I want to talk about hematuria really quickly. So the hematuria differential diagnosis. Hematuria differential diagnosis, struggling here, is shit cubed. Okay, what does that mean? What can cause hematuria? We've talked a lot about it. 
things like renal stones can cause hematuria. H stands for hematolo hematologic disorder, so I just spelled it wrong. But that's problems just for the coagulopathy. You have predisposition of bleeding, so you can get bleeding that goes into your urine. I, what is I? I can be infection. So, it's really struggling with this right now. But infection, so remember what infections? So remember that pyelonephritis really commonly causes hematuria. You can sometimes see it in a cystitis as well. Okay. Then what is one T? T is tumor. Okay, bladder cancer, kidney cancer, any cancer along the urinary tract. Cancer bleeds. Remember that cancer bleeds because cancer, this proliferation of cells, proliferation of cells need need blood cells, and those blood cells are fragile and can bleed. The last two are trauma, and toxins. So trauma anywhere along the urinary tract, damaged blood vessels, bleeding, and then toxins can cause this. So that's shit cubed. But the one you really remember is this one, tumor. You Anytime you have hematuria, you have gross hematuria, you have hematuria in patients with risk factors, you really need to be thinking about tumors, and you, that's the one you have to you have to rule out. This is very not step one related, but that's why if you have gross hematuria, if you have, if you have a patient with, with um, risk factors, you need to do like a triple uh, workup. You need to give them a CT urogram, that's to look for a tumor in the kidney. You need to do a cystoscopy to look for a tumor in the bladder. And then you might have to do urine cytology just to make sure you didn't miss anything along the urinary tract. Alright, so that's it for all our cancers and our little hematuria differential diagnosis.